The Sony FX3 has some unique features to it like this customizable eight speed zoom rocker right here on the body and also blazing fast autofocus and great low light performance making this Sony power zoom much better in 2021 than it was when it was first released back with the FS7 series cameras like five or six years ago. So let's take a look at this 28 to 135 on the Sony FX3. So for one, this lens came out with the FS7 series of cameras, which is a super 35 millimeter sensor on this camera. And the FX3 is full frame, so it actually is able to take advantage of that full 28 to 135. Whereas on this super 35 millimeter sensor here, it's more like a 40 to 200, but the field of view is different on each of these cameras. So there's a big difference there. So this is what it looks like at 28 millimeters on the FS7 and now I'll zoom all all the way in to 135. So this is as tight as it gets with the FS7. It's actually about 202 millimeters. All right, now we have the FX3. So now you can see 28 millimeters is much wider on the FX3. If we use the zoom rocker here, it brings up this little display at the top and we can zoom in all the way from 28 all the way to 135. Whoop, a little bit too far there because you can see we have clear image zoom enabled. So we're actually able to punch in an additional 1.5 times more at the end of the lens. So now we're in at 202.5 millimeters as well. And then let's dive into the menu here because there's some cool things you can do. So under the shooting menu, you go down all the way into zoom here and then the zoom range. This is where you go between the optical zoom, which is just 28 to 135 or you can enable this clear image zoom where you have 28 to 135, then additional 1.5 crop in on the sensor after the 135, making it about a 202.5 millimeter lens. And then the digital zoom, you're able to punch in an additional 4X after that. So the clear image zoom works great. I don't know what Sony does, but there's some kind of enhancing software to make it where the image doesn't lose that much quality. You still lose a little bit when you crop in with clear image zoom, but the digital zoom, uh, if you're in a pinch and you really need that extra reach, go for it. But you can do the same thing in post-production if you just scale it up a little bit in post, it's gonna look about the same. So not only do you lose a little bit of quality with this digital zoom, but you also lose your face detection and your eye autofocus when you use clear image zoom or the digital zoom. So that's something to keep in mind. No, there's no eyepiece. Oh, by the way, guys, if this is our first time meeting, my name is Ray Valencia. I work in television production here in Florida full time. And this channel is all about filmmaking, gear tips and tutorials and I shoot on Sony cameras. So if that's something that you're into, stick around and subscribe. Oh yeah, just pop into manual focus. Before we actually dive into the menus and everything and go into the customization of this lens, let's actually go over the different parts because there's some switches and some different ways that this lens functions that you may not be used to, but it's actually some really cool stuff on here. So let's dive into the lens and then we'll jump into the menu. Now we're back in the studio so we can actually dive deeper into you know like the physical body and all these switches because there's a lot of little locks and some cool features and things on this actual lens that make it unique. So let's go ahead and dive into the features of this lens. One cool thing is the autofocus, manual focus clutch system here. So you see if you go up here, it goes to autofocus and it focuses in camera. And then if you go down, you can manually focus like a mechanical focus would be where you have the measurements on the lens and you can repeat the same rack focus each time, or you can pop over into autofocus and use the FX3's amazing eye autofocus or face detection. The autofocus on the FS7 was meh, but it's not nearly what it is on the FX3. So the eye autofocus also works great with this lens. As you can see, it has excellent face detection and eye autofocus, so it stays locked in wherever I move in the frame. Another reason this lens is great with the FX3 is optical steady shot. This lens has a switch right here to turn it off and on right on the lens. And the FX3 also has some really good stabilization modes as well. So we're gonna see how those work out together. So just one more reason that this lens is better on the FX3 than it was on the FS7. The stabilization works great with the FX3, works in tandem. You can control the stabilization right here on the switch on the lens itself. 
Or of course you can do it in the menu here, but whenever you turn this on, it just goes back to whatever stabilization mode you were last in, whether it's standard or active. And then when you turn it off, it just goes to off and records the gyro data in the camera so you can stabilize your footage in post if you prefer to do it that way. So I'll show you here. So let's zoom all the way into 135. And this is with the stabilization off. And then I'll click it on. And now active steady shot is enabled. All right, so now we can enable active steady shot. Stabilization off. And on. So it does crop in a little bit, but it really smooths out all that shake there. So besides the focus ring here, you have the zoom ring next, and you can control this in a variety of different ways too. Here you have the power zoom, the T and the W there for tele or wide angle. And you can switch between manual where this controls your zoom, or you can go to servo where this controls your zoom. And whenever you do zoom in and zoom out with this focus ring right here, it does have a little slight delay. So keep that in mind, but the power zoom is more responsive. Or you can control the servo here with the zoom rocker on your FX3, which is an eight speed customizable zoom rocker. And whether you push it halfway in or all the way in will determine how fast this zoom rocker works. The FX3 works great with the power zoom lenses because it has an eight speed customizable zoom rocker. And the zoom rocker works in a couple different ways. So there's a couple different modes. There's a standby mode and there's a record mode. So a half press or a soft press is your zoom speed one and a full press of the zoom rocker is your zoom speed number two. All right, so I'll show you here. So in the standby mode, so you go down to the shooting menu and go all the way down to zoom here, option number nine. And you see you have the zoom speed option here. So you have two speeds in standby, one being the slowest. So this is your half press slow speed. And then your second one is when you press the zoom rocker all the way down. On my standby speeds, I like to keep those a little bit faster so I can reframe really quickly. And then when I'm recording, I like to keep those a little bit slower. All right, menu zoom speed so i'll make my half press slow and my full press fast so this is the half press this is this one speed and now i'll push it down all the way and this is my second speed this is eight the fast speed and now these are my record speed so here we go Okay, and then back in here. So that's the different zoom speeds, slow, fast, whatever you like those customized as. Next, you have this second zoom speed here. And this is for assigning custom key buttons to the camera body, but I don't personally use this because it requires two buttons, one to zoom in and one to zoom out. Next, we go back and now we can go to this remote function here. But the cool thing about the remote function is I don't have one, but it looks like you can do variable speeds if you use a remote function. So that's something we're yet to test out, but maybe in the future we'll have a remote or something that we can use to zoom in and zoom out from a distance. So next we have the aperture ring, which is the F4 all the way to F22. So it's fully manual right here, or you can bump over into this A mode here, and then you can control the aperture inside the camera body. At the top here, there is an iris lock. So you can either lock yourself in manual iris, or you can lock yourself in camera iris. On the other side of the lens right here, there is a switch for click or de-click. So your aperture will click like that or you release it and then you can have a smooth iris rack like this. And it has this adjustable lens collar here which has the 3 8 and quarter inch and a little locating pin there for a Manfrotto plate. So it just keeps it from rotating on the tripod. So that's really cool as well. And there are also some little strap holders here for like putting a Peak Design anchor in there or like whatever kind of strap you want on here too. So this lens does have a very unique lens cap as well as a very unique lens hood as you can see here. And underneath this cool looking lens hood, you have a 95 millimeter 
filter thread. So very large filter thread. So it's your standard cinema glass 95 millimeter thread and they do make circular filters for these as well. But something to be aware of that your filters for this are gonna be a little bit more expensive or you're gonna be using a matte box over this lens. The minimum focus on this lens is just a little bit less than one meter, 0 0.95 meters, which translate to about 3.1 feet from the sensor of the camera. So me personally, I use this lens for live events like sports, weddings, corporate events, things like that. Having the servo zoom is awesome for things like that because you can push in and push out nice and smooth with the servo zoom, which is great with the FX3 as well. The 28 to 135 is definitely a specialist lens. It's not for everyone. It's also kind of expensive. It comes in around 2,500 bucks and it serves a purpose that not everybody needs and it has a lot of fun functions for it though that are great for those that need it. And I know one FS7 owner that has this lens that absolutely loves it. And I know another FS7 owner that has this lens that absolutely despises it. But that's also understandable because the FS7 doesn't have very good autofocus and the low light capabilities aren't nearly what it is in the FX3. So me personally, I'm an FX3 owner, so my low light capabilities are through the roof and my autofocus, I have eye autofocus, face detection, 4K60, 4K120, you know, all the great things that I really need in a camera in this tiny little body here. But anyways, guys, that's all my thoughts on this thing for today. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and leave me a comment if you have questions about anything at all. Shoot for the stars and I will see you guys very soon in the next video.